It's all about derailing. We almost named our podcast derailing. Derailing. Or railing. What was it? Mike. It was railing, and then Mike and the, I was pic- railing. the picture was going to be <laughs> kind of explicit. <laughs> yeah. Railing. railing. It was either going to be random asses, or it was going to be railing. One of the Raising two. Raising helms. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Raising we sh- I wish we were recording for this whole helms. thing. We're recording right now. Are we really? Yeah, we are. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, we should so just start over with the... do this. <laughs> I-, I started like a minute in, okay? Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Mike at the Helm podcast. I'm your host, Mike Spencer. I'm your host, Arza Helm. Arza, we have a fantastic guest today, my Ooh. friend Jaren. He is really big into D&D. He's currently a stay-at-home dad. And he's all around just like a really cool guy. And yeah. you get to learn about him. And he has amazingly clear skin. I've been admiring it this whole time. <laughs> oh, he is. Oh, he's such a beautiful man. Oh. Wow. This is one of the things where I wish we were recording, like with a camera instead of just mm. our microphones. <laughs> yeah. So people could See really view like how just beautiful this man is truly yeah blue eyes blonde hair he's got the whole package well the first thing i was impressed with was ours it was his beautiful hair like i oh. i hope to have the same no i'm sorry notice how no one talks about my service <laughs> <laughs> hey i i know i've been admiring mike's beautiful hair it's, sure, all, yeah. it's all around all around i didn't shower today, mike i've always so told you your beard is amazing even though you that hate beard? it so. no it's not you do good. have a good beard it's, it's not thick. good Mm-mm. it's better than mine i don't i can't even grow hair for like a two-inch segment on my face Two inch segment. Yeah, look at that right there. Can you grow side? That's a nice shadow though. Like yeah. I can't do anything, especially because it's blonde. Like I have hair. Oh, you the blonde would be it. tough. Actually, <laughs> the blonde would be tough. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. always joked around like if I'm 25 and I still can't grow like a full beard, I'm gonna get a beard transplant. <laughs> which sounds so stupid. But I really, I want to grow a real normal human beard like so fucking bad. Well, my but birthday's on June 8th, and I'm turning 25. So. Look at that. <laughs> Make sure to wish Jaren a happy birthday. Are you getting a beard transplant? Yeah. Hell Make sure, yeah. Make sure to wish Jaren a happy birthday on June 8th. Yep. When that comes around, we'll link his Instagram in the bio. Don't it's add. coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> I got a question for you guys. Mm. Um, do you listen to anything or like do anything like before you go to sleep or during when you're trying to fall asleep? No. I mean, I, I look at Reddit. For like thirty minutes to two hours before two hours. before I go to sleep, but that's like my only kind of ritual. But then you just like, all right, phones off, and then you just like flip over and fall mm-hmm. asleep. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you, John? I'll I'll do random things. Like it depends on the night, especially right now. There's it's kind of like chaos. What my uh, routine is, mm. but for the most part, if I'm like having a hard time falling asleep, I do sometimes do meditation stuff. Oh, okay. I actually. Um, have headspace on my phone. Okay, I was going to say, do you use that. headspace? Yeah, yeah, headspace is great. I love headspace. So sometimes if I really need to, I'll turn to that, but that's actually pretty rare. Um, but other than that, the only thing I really listen to, I do have to always have a fan on, mm. even if it's like both for white noise, but also just so it's cold. But mm. a lot of the times for white noise too, like I hate when it's dead silent. Mm. I'm going to- so... I, I I fall asleep almost the same way. I like need to fall asleep to like a YouTube video or if I'm really? listening. Yeah, <laughs> I need to have some kind of noise going on. I hate white noise though. I don't really? know. I think it goes to back to like when I was a kid, and I would like fall asleep watching TV or like mm. even playing a game. Like I'd usually only fall asleep if I was exhausted, and I'm still the same right now. <laughs> like I have to be literally like exhausted, like 24 hours no sleep yeah. or something like that until I can finally fall asleep. And I don't drink a lot of caffeine either. Like I'll drink it sometimes if I want to like you know mm. be up with my friends or whatever, but. I'm not a big caffeine guy. I don't drink it every day. Yeah. But um, I recently found out that we have some Mike at the Helm listeners that use us to fall asleep. Oh, oh really? Yeah. No way. Yeah, I don't know if that's a compliment. Or yeah. That's exactly what I'm We're thinking. boring so, as hell. So, this, is, <laughs> this is the first comment on our um, YouTube channel. It says, love the podcast. Not sure how much uh, I've retained all the information because I listen to it when I fall asleep. Love, McRibbed. And Sandy Cheeks. Oh, classic. <laughs> McRibbed and Sandy Cheeks. That sounds inappropriate, that name. McRibbed or Sandy Cheeks? Uh, both. Possibly both, yeah. Okay, which it's one's almost, worse? It's like know. borderline rim job, Steve. Uh, yeah, it, you know? yeah. Okay. <laughs> like I'm about to McRib those Sandy Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you get it. You get okay. it. Not just that. Um, so my grandma is currently in the hospital, mm. um, and she's recovering from a hip sur- surgery. 
And uh, my dad's like, oh, hey, like Mike has a podcast out. Like, is there any chance you want to listen to that? And um, for the longest time, she was like fighting, sleeping and all that. And she's like, I'm not going to sleep. She's like uh, scared to die. Oh, dang. And uh, literally five minutes into playing the podcast, she goes. So I think we got to keep it more entertaining. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Arza, what do you, what do you, what are, what are some things we could do to try to try to engage the listeners? We instead? could just start screaming randomly throughout Scream. it. Yeah, to okay. wake are people up. Or, <laughs> I could see that. Okay. We're too much like ASMR right now. Yeah. Not not calling your grandma dumb, but maybe your topics are just too in depth for some of your viewers. Too in depth. I yeah. could see that. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of goes over their heads. I could see that. I mean, she yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty. Uh, see now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. I'm sure she's a lovely lady. Oh yeah, she's. A nice I hope lady. she recovers quickly. But yeah, I mean, we could specialize in uh, like sleeping podcasts. Yeah, you know, like we just slowly get quieter and quieter <laughs> as the podcast goes on. You know, it starts off like, "Hey, welcome to the Mike and Helen podcast," and then like we slowly start tiring them out until yeah, we talk yeah. about like more and more boring and more boring topics. You know, <laughs> and then we slowly like, Shh. and then we'll just put a fan in one of the mics. For that white noise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or a YouTube video. We're going to yeah. post different uh, different podcasts depending on which one you prefer. Like YouTube videos or just no si- or silence or white noise, <laughs> whatever it may be. So, Speaking of sleep, though, um, I was thinking the other day about... You thought the other day? Uh, That's yeah, it's rare, but wow. it happened, believe it or not. That's crazy. Um you know how people, you know, there's memes and people talk about all the time of like, oh, like this embarrassing moment keeps me up at night or like, I remember this embarrassing moment I can't sleep at night and stuff like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. do you guys have anything like that? Do you? Uh, do you have- I, I feel like I used to have that a lot in like middle school and mm. high school. Like, I feel like I would like say something I thought was stupid or anything like that. And then I feel like I slowly started realizing that everybody says stupid shit like all the time. Yeah. Like, 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 I don't know. I'm, I'm sure like. 10% of the things I say every day are pretty stupid. <laughs> and and I hope that I that I it's more leave that, those Mike. 10% out of the podcast, <laughs> but but you never know. I mean, yeah, we've said some stuff that's wrong, but uh, yeah. that's that's about where I'm at. There's a few like fairly major things that I still think about and I'm like, man, that was that was stupid. But mm. overall, I've kind of gotten that same mindset mm. that I don't think about a lot of the things I do recently. It's more of like stuff I did in high school that for some reason I still have embarrassment about mm, right. or some things in college. I don't know. Yeah, that's a lot. That, that's the thing a lot of people can relate to. Like they tell you um, like, oh, if you're thinking about those stories, like try to imagine an embarrassing story that like your friend had or like somebody else from high school had. And then you have a hard time thinking about it. And it's like, OK, so nobody's really paying attention to me. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's a big thing I think people have to get over after like high school is that yeah, like yeah. nobody's paying attention to you and it's yeah. a good feeling it's bad and good like, yeah. but it's like it's like oh great nobody paid, nobody cares about me <laughs> it's fantastic yeah what about you arza um you know i like i feel like i've never had that before like one like an embarrassing moment that's stuck with me stuck with you, you yeah. usually get over it pretty quick yeah or? like i i get embarrassed in the moment but probably like 30 minutes later I like, I'm good to go. 30 minutes later. That's Do you yeah. just like sulk and cry for those 30 minutes? No, or? I'm just like, oh my <laughs> gosh, I can't believe that happened. Like there, there was one that like stuck with me for like a day or two. A day or two. Yeah. And, um, earlier you told it off the podcast, you told a story, Mike, about like, um, off the record. Yeah. Off, off the, record. the record. We did you have not to subscribe record it. for that content. Um, oh, yeah. where you like talked shit on some guy's business name or something like that oh yeah i did do that yeah yeah it was just a weird business name it was just <laughs> i don't know it was like uh i, I was selling a, an ipad mini and this guy came and he and he wanted to get it for his kids and mm. and uh, he's like yeah like there's these businesses i'm opening up around like this place like if you ever see him open them up i'm like oh cool what's it called and then he tells me and i'm like oh that's a dumb name <laughs> <laughs> it was though I don't know. I uh, wish I could say the name. I'm not going to just like, yeah. But, hey, yeah. it might be some advertising for him. Yeah, uh, that's true. I mean, um, are you going to say it? I don't know. <laughs> it's like one of your listeners. What the? Um, He's probably not one of the 60 people that tune in. Yeah. But, but so I had something similar okay. happen where I was at, when I was down at BYU in Provo, uh, there was like a neighborhood potluck. And there were these brownies there that Mm -hmm. looked amazing, right? And so me and my roommate, we 
grab these brownies and then we go and sit down at a table with this girl and uh, she's like reading a book and we're talking to her, you know, where she's from, um, get to know her a little bit. And then she goes back to reading and we try the brownies and they're terrible. They taste like toothpaste because mm. they're mint brownies. I should have mentioned that. Okay, so oh, yeah. I like mint brownies. I'm a mint No, I, I like mint brownies too. And I was excited, but this mint, it was too toothpaste. strong. It, it was like toothpaste. Toothpaste, okay. And so we just started like shitting on these brownies. Oh, no. We were like, <laughs> no, you can't do that at a potluck. That's like the number one rule. If well, it's people you so, really trust, you're like, so, you point at it and you make a weird face, and then so, that's it. That's the potluck rule. We thought it was the. <laughs> the host wife that made it, which is also horrible to shit on it. Right. If it's the host wife. But we're like, we're like, oh, like, who made these? Colgate or stuff like that? <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then these two other girls that we knew came up and started talking with us. And we're like, have you guys tried the brownies? And they're like, oh, yeah, we tried them. And we're like, oh, dang, well, don't go for seconds. They're pretty bad or, or I don't know, stuff like that. We're just talking crap on it. And they're like, oh, we really liked them. Like, I had, like, three of them and stuff. And we're like, what? There's no way you enjoyed those brownies. And then the girl was just still reading. And then... No. You see the teardrops <laughs> fall under the pages. And, I can see this. And one of the girls just, like, points at her in mouth. She made them. And both of us just, like, <laughs> just looked at each other. Ew. And... She, she just oh, like had like hurts. a slight smile, like you could tell she was like hurt. That's that's something that sh- uh, that keeps her up at night, Arza. Probably, I, I forgot about, about it. I moments. forgot, I completely forgot about it. But that's something where when it comes up, I'm like, ooh, that was bad. <laughs> that was really bad. No. Oh man, oh, that was a little bit longer of a story, but you gotta, you gotta know the amazing. you gotta know the potluck rules, man. I mean, <laughs> you gotta really trust people. I don't know what we were thinking. I found a rock in my salad at a potluck. And I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't tell people unless you really trust them. If it's like a family party, it's like all right, you can talk to your mom because you know your mom made, you know. Mm. But other than that, it's like don't talk about anything to anyone unless it's delicious. Then you can talk about yeah. it. Mm, yeah. But yeah. If you find any rocks in your salad, or you know whatever, <laughs> don't 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 bring it up. That's that, that's my rule, anyways. That's a good rule. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Colgate brownies, man. Do you have potluck stories? Not potluck. <laughs> I'm trying to think of. Uh, Something embarrassing that happened to me. The main thing I can think of right now, pretty much everything I can think of that ever happened to me that was embarrassing mm. always included a girl of some sort. Right. Because I always just... Because you're really cool around the boys. At least us. Like Not usually, actually. Oh. And pretty much anyone I meet, I'm actually pretty nervous around. And But especially girls. But um, especially when it's kind of dating people. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But uh, there was one girl who, uh, bless her heart, I... <laughs> she... <laughs> I'm sure she knew I was really into her because I'd like always try to sit by her in her college class and stuff like that. Mm. And um, and one day I like paired up with her to it was like a writing class. And so I paired up with her to have her read my paper and she paired up whatever. And she was really nice. She'd always talk to me. She never complained or anything. And um, basically I sat on the desk that I was in because I was in front of her. But this desk was weird and it didn't have front legs. And I didn't realize this, so I literally tilted back, oh, and the whole desk no. fell over and in front of the whole class, and I'm, like, in the front, so, of course, it just completely fell over, and I just, like, <laughs> fell right in front of her, and it was just awful. But, Dang. Um, but then, after that, I proceeded to, you know, we took the same buses home, because we lived in the same apartment building and stuff. Mm. Proceeded to ask her out. She had a boyfriend, and Dang. so the whole thing was just bad. Is that one of those stories but, um, you tell to cheer up your wife? I know she's a big fan of... <laughs> Jaren falling over. She is into my pain, for sure. I don't know. She's <laughs> some sort of weird sadist when it comes to my embarrassment. Yeah, she definitely... Like, you're telling me, like, that. sometimes she's in a bad mood, and you'll try to, yeah, you'll try to cheer up. Be like, oh, remember that time I fell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, our, one of our first, like, dates that we did was, like, going to get Cold Stone ice cream or something, and she was also in my apartment building. And um, we were coming back, and we were parked at... The football stadium, which was across the street from our apartment building yeah. at Utah State, and it, like it's kind of coming down from a hill, and so we were coming down the hill, and there was just this little mud spot, and so I slipped in the mud spot, not realizing it was there, because I was like looking to see if there was traffic to cross the street, 
And uh, yeah, I just like totally biffed it all the way down, spilled the ice cream on me, got yeah. dirt all over me, oh, and she dang. just thought it was hilarious. She just laughed at me the whole time. And she took you home, gave you a nice sponge bath, right? Yeah, that yeah, was your something like day. that. And then cuddled you to sleep. And then, uh, and then we're now married with one kid. And rest look at history. that, <laughs> one little baby. And now, anytime she's sad, I tell her that story, and it cheers her up every time for some reason. Look at that. What kind of ice cream was it? Mint. Um, I always get the coffee. At, uh, <laughs> Co- oh yeah, you're a big coffee ice <laughs> so cream good. guy, and I love Reese's too. So I usually get that mixed in. I was a gross kid, and I would get coffee mixed with gummy bears. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I would know. <laughs> yeah, not a good, not a good ice cream. You know, like they just ask you what you want. Like it's like Subway, Cold Stone. <laughs> Cold Stone really makes me feel like because you know how when, when you go to, Stone, yeah. but you know how when you go into Subway. They're, you're like, oh, can I get like a club sandwich? And they're like, okay, what do you want on it? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, can I just get like a sandwich? Can I just get like one of the sandwiches you guys have prepared? They're like, we don't have any. It's just meat, and then you pick the topics. It's like, I don't even know what toppings I like. <laughs> I don't know, can you guys relate to this? But but no, Cold, I love it. Cold Stone is like the same way, where it's like you you have to pick your own toppings. Where like I don't know. I I like to just order something off the menu. I'm not a big like mm. picker kind of guy. Yeah. So that's why I think I was like, oh, See, no, I'm I like gummy picky, bears. So I'm like the total opposite. I love being able to pick whatever I want on it. But, but then you might get some gross kid that eats gummy bears and coffee ice that's cream. That's true. Yeah. I would get like bubble gum and chocolate. Bubble gum ice cream and chocolate. That's, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Who gets bubble gum ice cream? Dude, I was used to as a kid. For why sure, did they make yeah. that? Yeah. And it was real bubble gum in there. Why would you want that? Wait, there's actually bubble gum in it? Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, like chunks of bubble gum? Stuff? Yeah, yeah, the pink one? Yeah, you don't need to know that? It adds That's up how that. little times you've eaten bubblegum ice cream. Yeah. I've literally never eaten it. What if it's great? What if you it's really like bubblegum? I bubble hate gum? it. I hate it's, it. It's, <laughs> in the Baskin, it's in the Baskin Robbins 31 flavors Maybe for I've had it. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. I can't remember. Cotton yeah. candy isn't actually that bad either. Cotton I love cotton candy. Cotton candy's actually not bad. Cotton candy, too. Cotton candy's my go-to ice cream right now. Really? Yeah. Why? Why? I don't like, know. You it's like, like it more uh, than than what? Than the classics? Than, like, <laughs> than what? Peanut butter and like, chocolate? Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy. I don't mix dude. it with uh, gummy bears anymore. But uh, yeah, Baskin Robbins and Cold Stone, my go-to is uh, the cotton candy. That's the best one. People, it's underrated. Mm. I feel like cotton candy would actually go pretty well with gummy bears. If I'm yeah, being I feel, honest, I was gonna gummy say bears that. Better than are that. cold and frozen when they go oh. in the ice cream. Oh. Not good. Then they get all hard yeah. to chew. Yeah. In Utah, we have this place called Sub Zero. Have you guys been there? I haven't been there. And I live like across the street from that place. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> have you had it? I, I've been there like a total of t- two times because it's like really cool, but it's mm. expensive and you don't get a whole lot. It is but it's cool. Yeah. It's good. They it's like really freeze good. dry I really like it. the ice cream. Cool. Yeah, right. so in it's, front of you. They just like Sub Zero comes out and you just like Sub Zero cool. yeah. itself, not itself, Scorpion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do they have like a Scorpion ice cream shop? You think, nah. No, maybe in like Arizona or somewhere hot. Reptile? But. No, no. Just yeah. Sorry. Anyway, you're Sub Zero. Oh, I was just gonna say I, lo- I love that place. <laughs> okay. It's an experience. That what basically what they do is that you can choose like milk or cream or whatever, mm-hmm. and they mix your flavorings into it, and then they just flash freeze it with liquid nitrogen. Yeah, it's see, pretty cool. See, that's one of those places where they're like, okay, that name's clever. You know, unlike that one place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I love uh, I love PetSmart because it's like PetSmart, right? But then uh-huh. it's also Pet Smart. Like, it's smart. It's honestly, there with it's honestly so clever. I love it. I was going to say it. so smart. It's but. almost at, like, Mike at the Helm level. Yeah. But not quite. Yeah, imagine artists. if we would have gone with random asses. That would have been the best time. <laughs> oh, yeah. People would try to find us. Have we, we told can't... that story? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, like, uh, I mean, we always comment, like, oh, yeah, you can look us up on Google. You couldn't if we were named random asses. Yeah. So, yeah. They would just good. get porn. Just look under <laughs> images under random yeah. asses. Just look up random us. guy asses. <laughs> Anything like that. Look up one pickle jar, one man. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? Or is it called like Man in a Pickle Jar? I have no I've idea. I've never looked it up. I've only really found it <laughs> But you guys that. know what I'm talking about, Yeah, right? unfortunately. I have no idea. Oh, you know I literally, what I'm it just about. sounds funny. Anyone who's listening, please don't look up that. <laughs> For your own sake. I, I, don't even, I don't think it's even legal to describe it over a podcast. So. I feel like it's legal, just not uh, not for the kids. Not ethical. Not ethical? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> really not a good way. Not a good way to start it off, I mean. Yeah. Um... Mike. <laughs> yes? Sir. I know the other day you mentioned you had a story to tell us. 
about your worst night oh, of your life. Okay. Jaren might have a story about this too. I don't know if you thought of one or not, but oh, I, I know you had a story you wanted to share. Right. I it's a it's a couple days ago was the anniversary, the fourth anniversary of the worst night in my entire life. So um, my uncle and I would go hiking quite a bit and we'd also go like snowshoeing and stuff. And we decided that it would be a good idea to build a snow cave. I don't know if you guys know what those are. You know what that mm-hmm. is? Arza? Yeah. Yeah. You just kind of, you kind of build it. It's, it could be between like two and four feet tall or it can be bigger, but yeah, I mean, if you really try it, but usually it's just like this little cave you sleep in overnight. Um, and we decided it would be a good idea. We didn't have any uh, winter bags at the time. So we were like, Oh, what if we just like brought two summer bags each instead? Oh, and, no. uh, and it turns out that that's not <laughs> at all like what you should. And so I'm in layers. I have like, I have three pairs of pants on and two coats on and gloves and a hat and everything. It was freezing the entire night. And not just that, but the wind was just like oh my the gosh. loudest one I ever had. We ate one of those, uh, what are those camper meals called where you just put like hot water in there and it makes like some kind of stupid salad? Do you know what I'm talking like about? Cup of noodles or whatever? No, not cup of noodles. They're like actual camper stuff. Do you know what I'm talking like about? Like a dehydrated meal? Kind of, yeah. Like where? Oh, like the military. You just like let it let it sit in yeah. the bag for like yeah you let it sit in the bag for yeah, a second. So, yeah, so yeah so I was vegetarian at the time and uh, I got a black bean salad one and I let it heat up and then I ate it and I threw it all up because it was disgusting. Are you <laughs> serious? It was that terrible. bad? Yeah, it was so bad. It was this heated up, gross, dry. dry I beans. actually most most of the time I love those dehydrated meals. Ew, huh. no, that's. I think they're so good, dude. Maybe they should get a dehydrated meal ice cream. Yeah, a cotton yeah. candy ice cream. Isn't there? Con- isn't that ice cream? Astronaut, astronaut ice, cream? ice cream. Yeah. Like, you ever think of that, Mike? But... No, I was thinking like the black bean salad, dehydrated, and then that. And then ice that is ice cream. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Because <laughs> like, like, yeah, I know, I know, astronaut ice cream. Is it dehydrated? I guess it is, right? It has I to be. Think it's so. like a little or freeze dried or, dried or whatever. Freeze dried. I don't, I don't know the difference between them, but yeah, one of those. But yeah, it ended up being the worst night. I didn't get any sleep, and. Yeah, woke up. Not really woke up, but we just were like, all right, sun seems like it's starting to come out. Let's, yeah. Both of us were just in there in the cold. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you're going camping in the winter, there's a trick you can do where you can heat up a bottle of water and put it in between your legs Mm -hmm. where your testicles are and it's supposed to keep you warm. That didn't work. None of it worked. It was (laughs) literally the coldest worst night of my life oh my god and i even hate talking about it because yeah i was up the entire night and it was just it was so bad i've slept in a snow cave once as well me and my dad made one and that's funny because it's like one of my happiest memories with my dad look at that yeah Yeah. it it was awesome it was on the Klondike. it's like a scout trip that scouts take i got all you had to do was bring a bring a sleeping bag yeah, yeah. Winter of course, bag. I had a, I had an actual mummy bag, so yeah, it wasn't that bad. And then we had a tarp and stuff. But it's like it's actually like I want to say like fifteen or twenty degrees warmer inside of it, which is just think is cool. Yeah, it yeah it was warmer inside of it. Yeah, it was just when roaring you, winds yeah. and all that. I almost wonder like. Did you build it right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you built it right. Like what? Like that, that was the other thing. The cave was so small. It was like. Like, you'd have to really scrunch yourself in there and then, like, roll around. And then, like, you'd be staring at the ceiling like it's inches yeah. away from your face. And then it, like, melts on you by morning. Yeah. But, like, a lot of the ceiling drips on you. Once overnight. the sun comes out, yeah. And you got to build it really quick. Like, you got to go out in the morning. Because it takes a while to build it. Yeah. And if, if it starts to get dark when you're in the middle of building it, like, you're screwed over. Yeah. You basically just have to go and hope there's no bears hunting you. Well, so... <laughs> I know you're with the entrance. You're supposed to build it, so it it's below. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. the? And we that did didn't it. No, work. it was awful. Like it's not like it's like so, a sauna in there. If no, you're. literally. <laughs> no, I I slept in one once, and like we made one for scouts, and we all got so hot we like got sweaty, and we had to sleep outside of our bags. No way. Yeah. No. You guys were probably naked or something. Yeah. That was hot. Ring, yeah. <laughs> you make it. That's why they. That's why they banned the scouts. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, it's all ours as well. Yeah, so you can outside your bag <laughs> naked. Screwed. That's what's going on in scouts. <laughs> My kid's coming out of there right now. But you have any? Uh, what's the worst night of your life, Arza? I don't know. I honestly don't know. You know how worst night of your life? I can't mm. think of anything. It's not like it was like the wor- it, it was the worst. Like I lived a pretty privileged life. Like, Obviously, you could tell. Experience. Yeah, based on how that's the worst night of my life. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was just like, and you didn't have any phone. You're staring at ice for <laughs> ten hours, ready for the morning. Loud winds. You know, uncle's three feet away from you. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> no, the worst night of my life was uh, three days ago. Wow. And um, the internet, the internet in the entire region of the city was out all night. Oh, that's funny. The internet was out for you. Whole life. No, I'm just kidding. No, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> but it was kind of low key miserable, but not like that bad. It wasn't out for me. So oh, that's really? kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah, it was out for like 12 hours. So hmm. I can't live without internet that long. Interesting. That just reminds me that we survived March 4th. Oh, yeah. Oh, I actually, I was, I was planning on mentioning that. And I totally <laughs> damn, forgot. I didn't even. Didn't Man, know it's just that. already been a long day, I guess. Um, if anybody has been listening to every episode or just that specific episode, apparently Donald Trump was uh, supposed to commit treason and take over the country with military. And he didn't even do it. Can you believe that guy? How pathetic. QAnon. And actually, QAnon's now going back. It's like, well, well, like March 4th, like, we just said like March or April. Like, we didn't say March 4th, but they did. <laughs> we meant April 3rd. Yeah. We mixed up the <laughs> three and the four. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Our guys, our Q is dyslexic. You know? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I mean, they're never going to admit like... It wasn't true, right? Yeah, once again, it's the, it's the doomsday saying, oh, it's going to be it's gonna be a couple weeks. No, it won't. It fucking won't. That's the thing. It's not ever going to happen. It's like doomsday. The world's not going to end unless it's... Unless if Yellowstone goes off, then it's possible. I guess so. Always, but I'm, then life will survive. It's I, just, yeah, we, won't, we probably life, yeah. won't survive. Exactly. I've actually always been curious if, like, a new core to hit Yellowstone. What would happen? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, that's, that's like, the first place I would yeah. bomb if I were, like, you know... One of those guys. I'm already on the watch list, so it's fine. But uh, I, that, that would be a place I pick. That would be a place I pick. So, when I was a kid, I came up with a genius idea of how to solve the Yellowstone issue. Yeah. So you know how it's like swelling. When, when did you learn about the Yellowstone look? issue? I don't know. When I was like little boy. I'm not going to tell my kid until he's like 13. I mean, it was like it comes it's up one like of those, every four years or something. It's one of those things. Of it. It's just one of those things where it's like, like, I think about it, you know, mm. like where it's like, oh yeah, Yellowstone could blow up. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> like that you brought it up. And I feel like some of our listeners are going to be like, ah, oh, damn it. Like, <laughs> Yellowstone again. It's almost like the game. Oh, I lost the game. I thought about Yellowstone. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 So, That's true. um, you know, the movie 2012. Yes. So I don't think that was the first time, but that was like, the first time I saw like depicted, and the first time that it came into my mind, where like, happened in 2012. Yeah, so Yellowstone goes off. I didn't know like, that actually. These huge asteroids going everywhere, and they're like driving a van. I only saw that once in 2012 because yeah. I was in middle school, and we like all watched it. Yeah, and we thought it was hilarious. Yeah, I haven't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen 2012 since I was like 12. So <laughs> I remember the big build up to 2012. Yeah, it wasn't. Anyway. It wasn't the greatest movie. Yeah, like, just like yeah. that. Another Doomsday thing. And then what was the next one? Like 2015 or something? What was the Mayan calendar? Or was that 2012? 2012 was 2012. the end of the Mayan calendar. There was another one in 2015. Wasn't there a 2016, October? I don't know. I think there was a There's multiple of five. Yeah, 2015. It's always, it's always something new. But yeah, back to your um, But... Bad, bad, bad. 2012. Yellowstone. Yes. Way to solve Yellowstone. <laughs> so, <Full> um, <laughs> so I have the idea that we build like a robotic mosquito. Like a giant one. Already this pier- sounds so <laughs> awful. Already <laughs> this is the stupidest so thing. And it, and, it, and it pierces the ground and the crust and draws the lava out to relieve pressure. Oh. Like popping a zit. Okay. But no, you don't want to pop the zit. You want to suck the juice out of the okay. zit so it doesn't need to pop. So okay. we do that with draining it. Mosquitoes. With, with draining That's less stupid it. than I thought for an eight year old to it take it. It's pretty dumb. It's pretty dumb. No, I mean, the mosquito good. part's dumb. It's something to suck it out. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a scientist. I mean, I feel like if it were that easy, then it would just be that easy. But well, that I don't think we can drill far enough down, can we? I don't know. I mean, they've drilled holes like, what, two miles down? So yeah, but that's not the crust. drilled all the way down there. You know? Five miles? What's the what's the what's the first? I don't think hole? we've ever gone past the crust. I feel like we've only gone to like thirteen miles or something. Yeah, I thought it would, the number in my head is eight, but I don't know where the heck yeah. I got that eight from. Feet. <laughs> eight no, feet. no, eight miles. <laughs> well, I know. I think Carlsbad Cavern is like five miles deep. I know seven point five miles, and it took it's twenty seven years. Five? Seven point five, and it took twenty years Holy to reach. Holy cow! Isn't that in How Russia thick is the something? crust? I don't know. Pretty thick, I, I guess. Like I, I mean, do we even Probably know? Russia, do, I guess we estimate. Also, I think the 2015 thing was... I, I think, think that's the tell. Back to the Future year. That oh, yeah, it was, yeah. But that's not the end of the world or anything. No, yeah, yeah. But I'm just wondering, maybe that was your thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. My, I have a girl. Oh. I have a girl. <laughs> you have a girl? No, <laughs> I, I have a friend who is a girl. I was almost a girlfriend, and I decided to say I have a girl. But I have a friend who is a girl, and her birthday was uh, was that date. I can't remember what it is now. Really? It's like October... 16th? 17th? 2015? <laughs> uh, not 2015. No, that, that, I think that was when she turned 16. She was really <laughs> excited because she was born on like that Back to the Future day, I guess. Oh. Um, so. Hmm. Not that cool. But, uh, it's, no, really it's, not. Not. it's really not. Maybe we'll cut it out. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. <laughs> no, it was dumb. I'll just cry about it. Um, <laughs> but speaking of like, I guess that's not really a conspiracy, but earlier... <laughs> What, could you? Well, I want to go back to this Yellowstone. Thing, okay, right? <laughs> but like I don't think we finished talking. About okay, that. sorry, I thought we were done. I okay, just so that. like the mosquito thing. Okay, just like <laughs> has there been any sort of like uh, plan robotic of action? Robotic mosquitoes? No, oh. not like robotic <laughs> mosquitoes. Has there been any sort of plan of action to try to suck out the lava or no, do anything with I it? I imagine it's one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah. it's not going to make us money, so no one's going to divert funds to preventing to the end of the out. world. Well, yeah, because it's not an immediate issue, and like, I think if there was like a giant asteroid, people would band together. And be like, <laughs> yeah, we but blow, but so. we're not gonna like. Would Yellowstone actually end the world though, or just like the United States? Well, so the would idea it, like, is block just, out the sun. It would, that's yeah. the idea, yeah. Okay. It would block out the sun, but it would immediately eliminate everybody here in Utah. Right. So it would be uh, Montana, like Wyoming, Utah, Idaho. But Utah's the important one. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Because of Salt Lake. Yeah, the Mormons. Yeah, Mormons really. Yeah. We'll probably be protected because of the Mormons. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Captain Maroon. No, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go stack over this. <laughs> Have you guys heard about, um, I guess there, there is an invention that's coming out now that's supposed to combat global warming. Oh, mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah mosquitoes. Sorry, Robot mosquitoes. They <laughs> suck out all, suck the out all the magma the and they turn it into frost <laughs> and they blow it all over Antarctica. <laughs> no, um, so I guess they built these big ass boats that will like go underwater like submarines and they'll start freezing the ice into like a hexagon and then have the ice lift up so there can still be like snow in Antarctica and those kinds of places. That's an actual like invention somebody is like making right now to to combat global warming. That is awesome. What does that combat or I guess the rising or does that combat the symptoms of global warming? Probably the symptoms like the the rising of the ocean and stuff like that. Like but yeah, See, I just that, thought that was interesting. That that's what bums me out. Is like we don't fight the causes, we fight the <laughs> symptoms. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, well, we're not going to change, so <laughs> yeah. you know, change problems. We, we want to keep destroying stuff, so we'll just. Aren't we like? Pro- to, aren't we projected to run out of like fossil fuels in the next like fifty years or something? I have no idea. But really? I think energy overall is like getting cheaper, so we're not super worried. Right. Yeah. Not just that. But like fossil fuels, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they're supposed to run out, or at least the ones that we have, like for mm. reserves and stuff, like everything's supposed to be like all over by like 2070 or 2075 or something. Interesting. I have no, I have no idea. Yeah. Maybe. I know water, like there's a big water crisis that no one's addressing. Oh, yeah. Again, because like it's not an immediate issue yet and it doesn't make money. So, like, it's the water crisis. Um, so basically like a bunch of places are running out of water. So it's really bad in like Northern Africa. Um, and running out of like clean drinking water. Yeah. Um, just water in general, clean drinking drinking water. water. So like, I know Arizona has a big issue. They're expected to run out in the next like 20 or 30 years. Texas, like Texas is like pretty good because they have a big like underwater what do they call it? Uh, reservoir. Reservoir, yeah. yeah. Uh, underground reservoir, I mean. And so that helps them. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure the UN, they expect in the next like 50 years, like 80% of humanitarian crises will be a direct result of water shortages. Water yeah. shortages. Yeah. In fact, I think that's a big thing that um, Bill Gates is trying to tackle. Mm. I know a lot of people for some reason don't like Bill Gates, but I think there's actually a Netflix documentary I watched kind of about it. But... Um, yeah, basically just clean drinking water, and we always mm. contaminate yeah. any clean drinking water that we have. A big thing that freaks me out is microplastics, especially. Mm, yeah. Um, that's a big thing with water. But I You'd think know. Bill Gates would be, like, pro losing water, you know, because it hurts PCs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, but. Bill Gates, wait, like, political correct people? Wait, what's PCs? Personal computers. Oh, computers. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Oh, my God. It's kind of sad that that's replaced the meaning of yeah, I yeah, should have yeah. said Mac. <laughs> <laughs> just said I'm just saying, like, that's one of the few things that can hurt Bill Gates' business is water. Yeah, Big I water. Get it, I get it now. I feel so dumb. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's more than just contamination. It's like, I'm pretty sure some yeah. places, like, their reserves are just, like, running out because growth and the population is too high. Right. So, so isn't, like, the isn't that the purpose of the water cycle? Like, it, like, picks it up and, like, how does Arizona run out of water? Like, I'm actually really so, in the dark about so this. Like, so, like, so, yeah, and you don't hear about it anywhere because um, no one's solving it. <laughs> I guess Bill Gates is working on it, but, like, yeah. there's no, like, mass action. So, basically, what it is is, like, the water cycle only replenishes the natural water so fast at a certain rate and um and basically fine. they're using the water at a faster rate than it's being replenished at um so well and like yeah. i think also mexico has a hard time because a lot of their stuff they get from don't quote me on it, i think it's the green river whatever i think it's mm. the one that comes down from colorado and then all the way to the gulf Coast oh, on the other side. I the think Colorado that's the Rio River? Grande that goes Rio on that Grande? side. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of times that gets cut off in like Colorado, California yeah. and stuff. And so they don't get a ton. And then everything else they have is underwater reserves, mm. which they're also running out of. Mm. And so yeah. I think just a lot of things like that, like we're all just kind of running out in places everywhere yeah. at once. Interesting. And, and then also I know like some of it is supposed to be with climate change, like changing rainfall patterns. Yeah. Um, I know, I know that's a big thing in... Like, uh, northern Africa, or at least that's what I learned about in my, in one of my geography classes. That was a big thing on Total Recall, wasn't it? Like acid rain or like nuclear rain or something. Oh, probably. Like yeah. you have to stay out of the storms because I guess the nuclear bombs would go off and then it got into rainwater, and so yeah. like most water was toxic mm. at that point. So like, yeah, anytime there's a storm, like could go outside. I yeah. don't know. I, did, I do remember watching something in high school about acid rain. It basically talked about, like, how it's not, like, as acidic as most people, like, think when they think of the word acid. But basically they could prove that it's becoming more and more acidic. Like, it's eroding statues and buildings and stuff a lot faster than it normally would if it was just cleaner water, I guess. Mm. I don't know. Random things like that. But interesting stuff. So, also, I recently watched a documentary. Um, well, it's a show on Netflix. It's called Connected. It's actually really good if you want to watch it. But it basically talks about how the world's connected. Mm. And one of the episodes talks about the uh, Sahara Desert, which is super fascinating because I guess apparently the uh, sand and the dust from the Sahara Desert gets picked up by the wind currents and whatever else and just gets spread all around. Um, but one of the things I learned that I thought was amazing, um, the sand basically gets all the way over to like Brazil and everything else and feeds the Amazon and um, all these different nutrients because I guess it's nutrient rich. But it also feeds the plankton in the ocean, which apparently gives us like 50% of our oxygen, the phytoplankton wow. does. It's a lot of sand that, that blows know. around then, huh? It's a lot of sand. So and people live in the Sahara? Is that like a place people live? The Sahara Desert? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't think, I don't think so. they live there. I think they like travel across it. I just imagine there's the sandstorms get really intense if they if they're blowing I'm all sure the way to Brazil. It, yeah. yeah, maybe there's like oasis. O oases? What's the plural of that? O o i oasi oasi oasi. I actually learned octopus. It's actually octopuses. Octa? Really? It's not really? octopi. It's yeah, not. I don't think it's even cacti. It's up? like cactuses and ca octopuses. I think it depends on the, what I was told. Is it depends if it's like a Greek root or a Latin root, oh. I, or something like that. Interesting. Um, I could see like because octopi, like pi. I feel like that's a, a Greek word. Yeah, right? I can't remember which is which, but that's what I was told. Is it because octo's Greek, right? I because it's like October. Pies. Or, wait, isn't that but I don't know Latin? Latin? Didn't get that <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know either. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. I'm not a linguist. Uh, Greek and Latin, they're like the same thing. <laughs> pretty much. Basically. They're both dead. No, I'm kidding. Greek is still a language. <laughs> yeah. So is Latin, obviously. There's some Latinese. It's a, it's a dead language, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's dead. I'm sure somebody knows it. Somebody out there is keeping it a secret. Well, I know, like, don't. Like in medical school, don't you have to take Latin courses or something? Yeah, you learn Latin, but I don't think anybody grows up with Latin. I actually asked my dad that question. I was like, oh, if really? I raised a child with only the Latin language, would it make it 
a dead language anymore? And he was like, no. And I, that was like my goal for a couple of weeks was to <laughs> grow up, weeks. become like, a father. Learn, well, yeah. you know, it's a pretty stupid goal. It's like that mosquito thing you're talking about. That wasn't like, a goal. That's a real solution oh, to a okay. problem. Well, that's a solution to, I don't think there's a lot of Latin speaking people anymore. And I think that's uh, not a good thing. Mm. Needs to be more. So I'm going to raise a child that only speaks Latin, apparently. Mm. Eight-year-old me was going to. So okay. actually, this I have a question for you guys. So, there's a language out there, and I can't remember if it's the oldest or, like, it's either the oldest language or, like, the language that has the least amount, of, like, an official language that has the least amount of speakers or something like that. So, it's not Latin, then? Um, no. I can, but I can't remember which, like, which one of those two things it is. But, um, basically, there's all these researchers. It's like a village of, like, five people. Like, because in China, you know, people grow up and they move to the city. And so the village has just been, like, dwindling more and more. And there's all these, like, researchers or something trying to keep it alive, like, trying to document it as much as possible. But it's hard because there's, like, not a written form of it. Five um, people, though? That's like a family, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, like it's just like a small, a like, rural village thing. Um, I'm pretty sure the last people there are, like, super old or something. Wow. Um, so I yeah, can't remember the name of it. Hopefully this is all true. But regardless, it's kind of an ethical question of like a language like that. Should it be preserved? I don't care about that. Well, and those things always fascinate me, like uh, modern day tribes, like Mm. actual tribes that are just like completely not participant in society and stuff like that. There's only one of those, right? The huge one. There's a couple in Sri Lanka or it's like an island right outside of Sri Lanka or they have they've had like no contact with other humans. And any time, we think we talked about this on, the, on a previous podcast, where, like, even if you, like, go near them, like, they'll just start attacking you. Because I don't know who you are. Dang. There may be just, like, know. one that's, like, definitely like that. Maybe the other ones sometimes get our help. But I feel like there's a at least a handful that mm. are still just, like, out there and, like, pretty primitive, mm. for lack of a better word, I guess. Yeah, right. But I don't know. that I feel like that's kind of, like, an, a weird ethical thing, because it's, like... To some extent, you got to get, like, that there's traditions and that should be respected. But, like, if one of their kids, like, escaped and randomly found our world one day, like, that'd be so weird. That's what the Amish do, right? Did you know that? Well, yeah, and I feel like that happens with the Amish sometimes, yeah. Yeah, the Amish, I think, like, before you turn 18 or something, I can't remember exactly when they do it, but they'll send you outside the community to explore the real world and you can decide on whether or not you want to live in the real world or come back. Mm. And they do that with everybody that lives there. Like, it's a big thing. Where it's like, hey, we're not going to force you to do this. We just want to show you, like, it's going to be great. Like, it might not, it's not going to be great, but, like, it might be more your style. Yeah. And most people go back, but, yeah. I wonder mm-hmm. how long it would take for, like, the Amish to die out. You know, we're probably mm-hmm. going to leave on spaceships at some point. Are they going to... I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like it'll always exist in some form. Re- well, always? Just like though? most religions, yeah. I feel like at some point the Earth's going to explode, right? Because I feel like a lot of them have adapted to use some form of technology, but they still try to keep things... Simple mm. as possible. It wasn't the whole point of the Amish, where it was like they don't use any technology, like no electricity yeah. or anything. Yeah, something like that. Have you, <laughs> this is a weird question. Have you ever heard of Amish mafia? Oh, is there yeah. an Amish mafia? <laughs> I haven't heard of that. It was an old. I don't even know what channel it was on. I feel like it was like yeah, the Discovery Channel or something. But I used that. to watch this TV show called The Amish Mafia, but it was basically all about this Amish mafia. But they, I guess, there's different kind of sex sects of Amish, so S E C T. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But um basically they all kind of just do different things. But for the most part, like sometimes the leaders and stuff will use a lot of technology and whatever else, but a lot of times more traditionalist. I guess it's kind of with any religion, there's some that are branches off on the Mm. more principal traditions of like sticking straight to the rules. But then there's other ones that have kind of evolved to live in a more modern day, if that makes sense. Right. Because I know there's some Amish that like, they still are pretty simple. They keep the button up shirts and stuff, not zippers and whatever else, but they'll sometimes use electricity in their house or something like that. What you were talking about with breaking the rules sometimes, that's actually a big way they look for spies. Like I guess the majority of spies in the U S like past and present have always been like the youngest child. And it's because the youngest child generally like knows how to follow the rules and also knows the correct moments to break those rules or when it's okay to break those rules. Mm. And so that's why I guess like it's a big thing where the youngest kid 
It's not like you're destined to become a spy, Arza. <laughs> no, I am. I see me, do you see me change my sitting position? I'm, I'm interested now. I'm invested. Oh, I could even be a spy. Yeah, that's the, that's the first thing they ask you in spy school is like, are you the youngest you child? Yeah. yeah. I'm technically the youngest. I'm an only child. So You're yeah. also the oldest, though. Oh, fuck. I'm the youngest, so I could be a spy, too. Yeah. Look at us. That's another thing. I've always wondered what that is, but like all my closest friends, I feel like, have always been like the youngest kids, and I don't know why. We're the most mature yeah, I don't. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Although, yeah, all my friends have always been older than me since I was a kid. But so yeah. you're the most mature. Maybe we'll see. I'm probably not. Or maybe you're the most babyish. I could see that. We're all the babies. You guys yeah. trying to father me? Or, or yeah, the other way around. There's We've just so always wanted a little brother be. to get in deep conversations. That's true. Yeah. yeah, Janae and I are pretty much only children, and we kind of act like siblings. I feel like at least more than like normal couples do. Mm. So does she ever get stuck in the washer? Or like Is that, that a sibling thing? I think that's more of a stepmom thing. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Stuck in the washer in the sink. Do you know what I'm what? talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> what wow. is that? You're, you have such a clean mind, Arza. <laughs> You've never seen those stepmom, stepsister. Oh, it is a porn thing. Oh. I didn't know there was like a the washer. The mom gets stuck in the wash. It's, like, it's called stuck porn. <laughs> I think. Stuck porn? Yeah, and Sorry. it's pretty rapey. Like, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not into that. I feel yeah. like that's how a lot of porn is. Rapey? And obviously not all of it, but... I feel like stuck porn's got to be up there, though. <laughs> pretty uncomfy. Other than, like, rape porn. Because there's rape porn. But, look, we probably should stop talking about it. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Sorry. But it's, 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 it, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a big genre right now. It's like, you're, like you're, your friend yeah. gets stuck in the washer. Interesting. And, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Because, you know, it happens and you do all stuff the time. To it. Yeah. 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 Damn, crazy. Realistic. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> Back to spy stuff for the audience. <laughs> so, anyways... <laughs> Really though, have you ever like been emptying the washer and freaking <laughs> the laundry and gotten stuck? How do you get stuck doing no, that? But they're also wearing dead? like this tiny dress, no underwear. I mean, it's, it's just the, oh, the it's, classic. Okay, it's the well, same I mean, thing with the it, pizza it's, guy, it's true, it's true. where it's like where the girl's like, I don't have any money or anything like that. It's the same kind of yeah, like it's true, uh, it's true, it's true. like out there porn stuff. So that's never happened to you as a pizza guy. It's not. Although, like, <laughs> Wait. as a pizza guy, I've seen some stuff. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I've seen uh, naked ladies pretty, not frequently, but probably like at least once a year. Like, I'll see. Um, all right. Or like, uh, I went to, I delivered to a party one time, and my tip was a bunch of girls flashing me. I'd rather the tip. <laughs> I'd rather the money. I was pretty <laughs> poor at the time. And, you know, I have access to it other places, so, than, uh, than delivering to a party. But, yeah, I mean, mm. you get to see some stuff when you deliver pizza. Mm. Keep going on topics that aren't like. So aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were wanting, or at least I was wanting to talk about aliens. <laughs> I just didn't say we. Speaking of pizza. Speaking of pizza. You want to talk about you ever aliens? Delivered to an alien? Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> aliens though. Do you guys have alien stories at all? Um, like, oh, I think I saw a UFO. Personal alien stories? No. No. I don't even have any personal ghost stories either. I don't either. I'm not a special guy. Like, I've been spooked, you know? <laughs> but probably not by anything real. <laughs> yeah. That, that's definitely for me, too. Like, I've, I've had, like, spooky moments. But, yeah, it's probably more of, like, a herd mentality thing where it's like, yeah, this is kind of eerie to be here. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, things like that. Or it's like, oh, that dark but, corner looks a little sketchy. <laughs> not going to yeah, go into there. I've never had, like, close contact to the other side or mm. to anything outside of our existence or... I don't know, atmosphere that I'm aware of, mm. at least. I'm not that cool. What about you, Arz? Are you that cool? Uh, no. Well, any of your spy experiences? You didn't... Uh... <laughs> no, the spy stuff is a story. Those are stories for another time. Another but, time? Yeah. Sounds good. But do uh, you guys believe in aliens? I definitely believe Absolutely. they exist. I don't yeah. know if they're on this planet or have ever been to this planet, but, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, we're just so tiny. And to think that life is that rare mm. in the universe is just insane. Like, I can't believe... There's people out there... That believe in ghosts, but they don't believe in aliens. Like you believe mm. in interdimensional beings that are from you know heaven or hell or whatever, and they're here to spook you. <laughs> but you don't believe. But you don't believe in fucking aliens. Like that could be a real, actual thing. Yeah. yeah. So could ghosts. For sure. <laughs> so, I think it was November and December. So first, the Israeli. Well, it was the former Israeli space security chief. 
So I think that sounds pretty credible. That's maybe quite the maybe, town. maybe, yeah. maybe it's maybe it's not, but um, he came out and he said that a galactic federation actually exists, and like the reason they haven't really like uh, come to like recruit Earth yet is because we are not technologically advanced yet, and they want us to be like able to actually travel in space before hmm. like right. they have us join. Not just like. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's all he said, but I would imagine, like, as an outsider, uh, as an alien or whatever, um, like, morality is also a big thing, mm. or ethics. Like, oh, these people are out here killing each other, murdering each other. Yeah. There's still wars going on between these tiny countries, and yeah. we have a whole universe to worry about. Like, yeah. Let's not go down there and talk to him yet. Yeah. Like, I could totally see something like that being a thing. Yeah, and, and along those lines, then, like, a month after that, a Canadian... What was he? Um... Dang it, I had to pull. You just up said it was a Canadian. Canadian. Um, what? <laughs> you just said it. He was a Canadian. Yeah, Canadian. No, I, I think it was the former Minister of Defense is what it was, okay. I think. But he came out and he said that there's actually aliens that live among us. They're like humanoids. And hmm. they have technology that could like solve climate change and like solve a lot of our issues like that, that are like looming issues over humanity but they don't trust us because of all of our infighting. Right. Interesting. Um, we should get one on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you Maybe we have one right now, Jaron. Maybe I'm one. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Dude, not. Dude, I would not know if I was one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be one of those dumb aliens that they sent down here. But um, who knows if that's true or not, but like, I feel like those are at least somewhat credible sources, yeah. you know? If yeah. the first one's true, I feel like then when Trump found out, he was like, man, I want to get involved with this. And then he made the Space Force as like an attempt oh, to get involved. Oh, you know? well, maybe actually. The Guardians of and the Galaxy. And then they were still like, yeah, you made a Space Force, but now you're still not part of our team. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, also. You can't be the part of the Avengers. You should get like an actual hair transplant before you put <laughs> worry about that. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, there's a high chance that we're like plants compared to these aliens though yeah for serious like they're yeah. like oh yeah look at these people with their fridges and microwaves yeah, <laughs> yeah i think it's interesting that we always think that they're always going to be like way above us i mean if, if they have a space if force. they find <laughs> that's yeah, the thing i can't imagine a space, a space force, force plants and if they do find us first then i could see why but I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we are the smartest thing out there, and that's just Dude. as scary. And maybe they just started. So like, that would be even scarier. I think. <laughs> I don't think it's scary that there's something smarter mm. there, because I feel like the, uh, mm. at least as humanity has gone on, we have gotten more compassionate for each other. That's right. true. There's been less I do think, war. There's been more yeah. democracy. Um, like I think, uh, I think since like the dawn of time, like somebody has literally looked at the statistics, statistics for murder and all those things and like almost everything has gone down. Like anything that is an act of like hatred mm, has yeah. gone down significantly since previous mm. years. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. We're it, in one of the most peaceful times of our lives of, or of, of human history. Yeah. Mm. Cause I, I would say ignorance is like the exact opposite of compassion. So yeah, that makes sense. If they, if they were a lot smarter than us, then they probably would be a lot more compassionate than us rather than just elitist, I guess. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You know, we think about all these countries and how, you know, they're, they think that each other is so different. Like, imagine a little tiny little green boy coming down here and freaking everybody out. Like, they'd probably kill him, <laughs> Right. Or a bunch of them. Be yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? And yeah, there would be a war out already. Yeah. yeah. Like, even if one person decides it. Like, yeah. It'd be like big preemptive leader. attacks. Exactly. Yeah. So. It makes sense that a they might be only a communicating with a few people or just not communicating at all and yeah. observing. That's one of the that's one of the bigger um, conspiracy theories I believe in is that that could be an actual thing. Like aliens living among us. Um, just aliens are observing us. Oh like yeah, they know about us. They're like, yeah, there's Earth. Yeah, it might even be like like we're animals in a zoo to them. Like they come visit and like, <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. Like. Uh, like we're one of the exhibits, yeah. yeah. Like how we look through a, a super nice telescope to like look at a detailed image of Mars. Like yeah. they look at us and they're like, "There's Earth," and then they, are those morons they can see live. us like crawling around. They're like, "Ooh, <laughs> that could be like what Earth is." Like, cause you know how we have like those zoo safaris where like it's like look at all this land these lions oh, and yeah. tigers have and that's what we have is like look at this rock we built for these that's people they think it's see. all real <laughs> this planet. i could totally see something like that yeah Damn. maybe the technology that they have is actually robotic mosquitoes oh yeah, yeah. there yeah. could be robotic mosquitoes among us <laughs> yellowstone's supposed to be what like twenty thousand years overdue 
or something like that. It's supposed to be overdue. Maybe it's because robotic mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Entire like, time. there's robotic mosquitoes among us. Ours is one of the aliens. He already invented it. He had to, he had the technology. Mm-hmm. He's looking at me with his very serious face. I think we're gonna be murdered <laughs> on yeah. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we know too much. <laughs> But, yeah, I thought that stuff was pretty interesting, and I don't think I've talked about it yet. Yeah. So. We haven't talked about aliens yet. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things that we said we'd talk about in our introduction. Yeah. One of the 14 million different things. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoy... Have you guys ever seen Ancient Aliens? I have not. Ancient Aliens? That's the it's one with the on meme, the History right? Channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, is it? I thought it was just called like Aliens. Aliens. Yeah. 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 Is it called Ancient Aliens? It's called yeah. Ancient yeah. Aliens. Yeah. It's supposed to like predict... Like, it's supposed to be like, oh, all these history events are because of aliens, right? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Like, the whole thing. It's just, it goes through a lot of biblical events, especially. Mm. Talks about how they basically could have been aliens. Um, For example, the one that I watched that I thought was super interesting was the Ark of the Covenant, which most people know about because of Indiana Jones now. But um, that was an alien thing? What? Oh, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. (laughs) not in Indiana Jones, it wasn't. No, but basically they said that that it, it was an alien weapon of some sort, potentially. Because it said, like, people would get sick when they were around it. If they touched it, they instantly died and stuff. Like, that's what it said in the Bible and whatnot. So they just said, like, the way it's described could have been a weapon that an alien randomly gave us someday. Or, or like a nuclear bomb. Right? Or a nuclear bomb from Isn't the future that, uh, or something like that, you know? That's what a nuclear bomb is, right? Or if you're a nuclear waste. If you go near it, you get sick. And if you touch it, you die. Like, things like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you die instantly. Yeah, or maybe if yeah. it's strong enough, probably. Yeah. Some like, super radiated. Well, and yeah, yeah, maybe it was just traumatized over time or something. But... I think stuff like that is super interesting because if we have had contact, I guess it would make sense of why there's all these random anomalies that turn into potential religions and stuff. Yeah. I don't know how true this is, but yeah, I've seen documentaries of like art pieces that have UFOs in them. Oh, yeah. Like uh, they'll have like UFOs in the background. It's like, oh, why is that? I feel like that's kind of like the dragons thing we talked about the other day. Like I feel like everywhere we always see somehow that there was like basically UFOs of some sort, like a flying saucer thing. Right. Yeah. That's always been like even in like ancient Chinese art, there's been images of like saucers in the sky or something like that. Dragons and aliens are just in all cultures, all ancient cultures. Dragons are aliens. Um, We just solved it right here. You heard it here first. Robotic mosquito dragons. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'd be so down if dragons were aliens. Dude, that'd be sick. And one day they'll return. You never know. I was just trying to say something. No, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it was about aliens. Um, dragon. And then we said dragons. We ruined it. Well, yeah, because then I na- thought of another story about dragons. Oh. I can't we remember. Dragons. Well, the dragon thing. Um, now, I saw this thing the other day. I haven't fact-checked it, so take this all with a grain of salt. But apparently we've never found like a full T-Rex skeleton. Dude, we were just That's talking about that last <laughs> I had no idea we've never found a full T-Rex I did, skeleton I did, I did, either. And I've never fact-checked it. Maybe that's not true, but I didn't know that either. That's true. Well, I didn't fact-check it from two of our smart friends. So yeah, two of our smart friends. Yeah. And apparently, like, did you... And, like, the bones are kind of, like, hollow or something. Dude, well, we were told this <laughs> yeah. last night. Are you sure you weren't with us last night? That is crazy. I was secretly recording. I was like, if you think Jaren will be good enough, like, to have tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. yeah, see if this conversation's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, some people... Yeah, so I guess you guys know, but some people theorize that... T Rexes were actually dragons. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was also theorized that, like, because, like, ancient civilizations found dinosaurs, that they turned them into dragons. Because that's why Japanese and Chinese dragons don't have wings. They're just, like, these like, little flying boys that wiggle know. around. They're like snake dragons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. There's a lot of Asian countries that do that. The f- wiggly. I think so. Yeah, I think it was, you know, it came from China and a lot of. I mean, China was like the center of culture of ancient Asia. That makes sense. Was so, China bigger in ancient Asia? Um, it just like varied from different dynasties. Like sometimes it was just split up into like different tribes. Um, and I am not an expert on any of this by any means. But mm-hmm. and then like I can't remember what dynasty it was like the Chao Dynasty or something like that. Dude, One of those. No, <laughs> Tang Dynasty. I don't know, but one one of them like united all the tribes and stuff. Interesting. Um, oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. it seriously is one of those like ying yi, you know, one of the one of the one of the, one of those. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't remember which one it was, um, but yeah, they they a lot of the culture of East Asia came from ancient China. 
Hmm. And a lot of the peoples migrated to different areas from ancient China. So, Interesting. pretty cool, pretty cool. I guess it makes sense because don't, um, like most of the theories say that people that civilized America first came from like Russia, the ice bridge and stuff. Yeah. Which was Asia. So. Yeah. Or is Asia. <laughs> it was Asia really, and Europe. It was really cool because when I lived in Taiwan, there was this area there uh, that I lived in where there were tons of different Aborigine villages. Like I lived in a little town like in the middle of all these villages. And, like, their artwork and, like, clothing and stuff like that, to me, looked very similar to um, what we associate with American Native Indian, Native Mm -hmm. American Indians. Um, And, of course, that's regional, you know. I mean, America's huge. There's tons of different tribes. But um, I, I thought it was really cool. I was like, wow, like, they, like probably have similar methods of like making clothing or something like yeah. that. And then, yeah. That's right. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Interesting. I remember that alien thing, by the way. I was, ta- I was here. It's pretty Sorry. Good. Jumping back. Um, there was, so like the earliest sci-fi book written was by some Greek guy like thousands of years ago. And it's called A True Story. Huh. And, oh, I remember hearing about this. And yeah. it like has like aliens and time travel and all these concepts that, like, I would not have thought really existed. Yeah. Or you think of it as, like, Star Trek era, like, sci-fi. Like, yeah. Oh, look what could happen. Yeah. And yeah. it's a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyways, there's my That's story. Cool. Sorry, I, I've talked a lot. This last I know, story. No, <laughs> a, I love listening to your voice. There was this <laughs> thing that happened back in the 80s, I guess. And it happened in um, an African country. I, I think it's Botswana, Uganda. I don't know. I can't remember exactly which one it was. But um, I guess it was in the 80s, and these aliens came down to this elementary school. And uh, I guess they talked to all these, like, little second graders that were out on a playground. And uh, they they were basically like, hey, like, just want to let you know your technology is going somewhere really shitty. See you later. And then they left. <laughs> what the hell? And, uh, and like... Bill Gates what, school. Yeah. Well, not just oh. that. So <laughs> all, these, all these kids... Um, individually remember the exact same thing happening which uh if you remember like that's not even a huge thing in like the like the witnesses that we were talking about like usually uh, stuff changes by person to person yeah but i think this this event was just so traumatizing for all these little second graders that they just remember exactly how it was and i guess it never really came into surface until maybe a couple years ago Mm. where this guy like it kind of showed up on his desk and he's like oh like more people would be talking about this if it was actually real and then he eventually decided just to start questioning all these people that were involved in like this uh the situation and all of them described the aliens and the situation and what happened in the exact same way. Not only that, but every single one of those people like didn't tell anybody. Like they didn't tell their spouse, they didn't tell like their kids, they didn't tell their family really. Like just because when they were kids, nobody believed what they were saying. Oh dang! So they were just like, oh okay, nobody's gonna just believe like this. Locked away. Exactly, me. and they're just gonna make fun of me for saying it. So I'm just not gonna say it. Like most of those kids were like, yeah, like I haven't told the soul of this in like 20 years. That's crazy. Which, is, which is just nuts when you think about it. Like, yeah. you know, these people are like 40 years old now. And I don't know what happened with these aliens where they were just like, yeah, these guys look like real people. Like, <laughs> they came down here and, and we're just talking to these second graders for some reason. But yeah, I mean, that was probably, that was probably the worst spot to pick because second graders in Africa, <laughs> I feel like for aliens to come down and, and give us some advice. But. And that second grader now? Joe Biden. Joe yeah. Biden. <laughs> in the 80s, wow. Yeah. He's a young guy. Yeah. He's looking really good, only like in his 40s. Right? <laughs> yeah, life hasn't treated him well. <laughs> no, definitely it's pretty not. stressful being in politics. Yeah. Have you seen those before and after pictures of like Obama? Yeah. Oh my gosh, presidency? yeah, those are crazy. He looks so awful after and it's just nuts. <laughs> yeah. What do you think aliens actually would look like? Like if we saw them? I really think they'd look like little green people, like with big eyes. Yeah. yeah. Like, because there's been so many theories like that, and there's been, quote, bodies found. And, like, and witnesses. Honestly, and I think, I think, what we, I think we've gotten smaller since we've grown more intelligent. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, isn't that a thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? I feel like we've gotten um, bigger. We've gotten bigger. From bigger? Our, yeah, because we are better we have better nutrition better nutrition yeah i think that like wasn't it from the stuff we maybe i'm just insane i'm probably insane but like we evolved from like bigger beings um i don't know i know that we've gotten like less hairy and like our 
space that has our brains. Well, I don't know this, but this is what I've heard. Um, like and like the what's it called? Like the brain cavity. I can't remember what it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, has gotten larger for like larger brains and stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, we um, have the largest brain out of any of the primates, right? At least the thinking I part, I think. I don't know. Thinking part. Oh, of all the primates? Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't know. I don't know how we are compared to whales, but probably not yeah. that great. But yeah, thinking part. The, the <laughs> hippocampus? Whatever the front part of your brain is. That's the frontal know. lobe. Frontal lobe? Yeah. yeah. I think that's the part that you think with, right? Yeah. I have no I idea. Know. I think you think with all your brain. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's like the main, like, I guess. The thinker. We need a neuroscientist solver. on here. Yeah. <laughs> you should get one, yeah. But uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but humans actually have the biggest penis out of any of the primates really? by far like by body size though yeah no like we or have like general. gorillas have like two inch penises wait why i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, you you know the fact i guess so i guess i'm just saying like, I, don't, random facts, I don't think seems like you would logically look into why <laughs> I, I just i don't think they evolved to have little penises i'm just saying like humans have the biggest penises out of the primates by far. I wonder why that is. That's I, the question we leave you what? with today. I feel like with how gentle human... Nah, I don't know. Never mind. How gentle? We don't need to talk the, about... The we don't need, no, 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 no. We don't need to talk about sex and stuff. But, um, <laughs> I think that's good. What? I think it's good. Yeah, let's, let's just leave it with that question, I think. Oh, to end the yeah. podcast? Okay. Mike's done with us. He's, He's like, I'm sick rare. of us. So thank you so much for listening to us at Mike at the Helm. Or is it, where can they find us? They can find us on TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram at Mike at the Helm. Yes. And uh, if you want to leave us any comments, questions, or concerns, we only got one so far. We've recorded like nine episodes. <laughs> Give us something. Something well, to respond to. We've only to. released like six, to be fair. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Um, but also, if you enjoyed this at any point... Just go ahead and give us a review on Apple Podcasts or go, give us a follow on Spotify. It really helps us out. It's free to do. Obviously, you don't need to pay any money to do that. Uh, if you do want to pay us money, Mike, where can they find us? You can find us at anchorfm.com. And we're looking to open up a Patreon, hopefully, pretty soon. And oh. we can put our uh, put some extra content on there. I didn't know that, but I'm down for it. You've heard about my theory of driving around. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I didn't know we were doing that soon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll just give them a little tidbit. It's, just, <laughs> it's just probably just going to be called driving around. We'll see what it's called. Um, special thank you to our guest, Jaron. Jaron, do you have any closing words? Um, no, thank you for having me on. Thank uh, you so much for... Oh. It was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're good. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you for... Uh, oh, yeah, make sure to wish Jaron a happy birthday. <laughs> June 8th. Uh, June, June 8th. 8th. Yeah. 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 Thanks for coming on, Jaron. We'll have to come on again. Yeah.